Hey everyone, I have a good story for you today. It's one of those stories where everything comes full circle and it's pretty satisfying. We're going to be talking about General Motors and their dealerships and how the dealership model is becoming more and more of an issue for traditional automotive manufacturers. The main article today is from the Wall Street Journal and it's titled, About 150 U.S. Cadillac Dealerships to Exit Brand Rather Than Sell Electric Cars. Now, this dealership model problem is something I've touched on in earlier videos, like when you had the four dealers who were marking up the Mach-E line by up to 15 grand per car. So we're gonna talk about the new problems GM is running into with their Cadillac line. But before we do, if you enjoy this type of content where I analyze the news and give my perspective on it, consider subscribing because it's free and and it helps you make more videos like this in the future. Another thing you can do if you want to support the channel is to send biased or misleading articles to me for future videos. I'll leave my email down below. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. All right, so GM is having issues with launching their new EVs. As we know, GM is scheduled to release the Cadillac Lyric, which is a fully electric vehicle, and they're planning on having it go on sale in the beginning of 2022. Oh, I should add that Cadillac is owned by GM, just so we're all on the same page. This is gonna be Cadillac's first entry into the EV market, and with that, Cadillac dealerships, in order to offer EVs, need to upgrade their setup to including charging stations and repair tools for those EVs. The price for this upgrade is around 200 grand, so GM has given Cadillac dealers a choice. They can either spend 200 grand on upgrades so that they can sell EVs, or they can be bought out by GM themselves. Given that choice, around 17% or one in six Cadillac dealerships have decided that they'd rather be bought out than sell EVs. And one in six dealerships is not a small number, but we're gonna touch a little bit on that later. GM is making a hard push for Cadillac to be their premier EV line that offers the peak of what EV technology GM can create. In fact, GM executives have said that its Cadillac dealerships could offer entirely EVs by 2030. Now, you should know that the majority of dealers who accepted the buyout also own one or more of GM's other brands, so it's not as if they're not going to be selling GM vehicles anymore, it's just they won't be selling Cadillacs. And to be perfectly honest, it actually isn't that surprising that many dealers might not want to have the hassle and complication of offering the Cadillac brand because it's fallen considerably in the last 30 years. Cadillac sales volumes are nearly half of what they were in the mid 80s and dealerships know it. That may be part of the reason why dealerships don't want to invest into the Cadillac infrastructure. Declining sales for decades doesn't exactly inspire confidence on the future of the brand. And that might sound like a bad thing for GM, and to be fair, it, it kind of is. But it's actually not all bad. Because while sales for Cadillacs have been declining, dealership numbers haven't been declining at the same rate, leading to a Cadillac dealership saturated market. So with that in mind, having 17% fewer Cadillac dealerships making sales could increase increase the sales numbers for each dealership that's left. According to GM executives and Cadillac dealers, having such a large dealership footprint in the past has decreased the profitability of each outlet and ultimately hurt the brand. So in a somewhat surprising turn of events, having less dealerships could actually be good for Cadillac. But I think more than that, this move by GM to try and make dealerships prepare for electric vehicles shows a massive flaw in the dealership model itself. Because yes, in this case, GM losing dealerships actually turns out that it might be a positive for them. The market was oversaturated with Cadillac dealerships due to slowly declining sales over the past 30 years. So this is a way of culling the herd, so to speak. But the increase of EV sales has been proving to be a problem for the traditional dealership market. Usually when a dealership makes a sale of a gas car, half of the dealership's profits come from the services and parts. When we look at gas cars, they get oil changes frequently, which is often handed by the dealerships. Then you have other maintenance like spark plugs and transmissions fluid and brake fluid and clutch fluid and drive belts and the list goes on. Chevy put out two maintenance schedule charts that really show what I'm talking about. They have one for the Chevy Bolt and one for a regular gas car maintenance schedule. I mean, just look at that. If you're a dealership where you have 50% of your profits coming from services, then EVs should terrify you because you're clearly not gonna be doing nearly as much in the way of maintenance. And this is why the traditional dealership model doesn't work very well with EVs. They just don't have the same amount of service required to stay running. So even if you wanna say that dealerships are good for consumers because it helps with service scheduling, you can't make the same argument for dealerships when it's an EV being sold. The Wall Street Journal article even mentions that issue when saying, the way dealerships make money selling electrics will be different than selling combustion engine vehicles, said Aaron Kerrigan, who runs an advisory firm that helps dealers sell their businesses. 
there will be an opportunity for automakers to rethink their franchise models. That's a very kind way of saying this is gonna be a sink or swim situation for the whole dealership model. Now, they do have other options where they can try and increase their margins. Uh, for one example, the financing, where traditionally EVs have had higher upfront costs, they could try and increase their margins there, but that's rapidly changing as EVs are becoming cheaper. I personally think the shift over to EV sales is going to force a change in the dealership model. Right now, dealerships can afford to sell gas cars at a cheaper cost because they know they're going to make back profits through the service and maintenance schedule. Once EVs become more mainstream, that's not going to be an option. That's going to put more pressure on dealerships to artificially mark up the the purchase price of EVs themselves because the main source of profit for EVs is the sale itself. And that can lead to what we saw with the Ford Mach-E line where you had dealerships marking up the Mach-E's by up to 15 grand per car. To be totally fair, the main reason for the dealership markup on the Mach-E line was because Ford isn't producing very many yet. So there's more demand than supply and that motivates the dealership to increase their prices because if they're gonna sell all their inventory anyways, they might as well increase their margins. But that's a problem. We have a breakdown in incentives and the dealership model doesn't allow the free market to correct itself. If you want more details on dealerships, I've done a whole video on it and I'll link it below. But to touch on them briefly, the best interests of dealerships and the best interests of manufacturers aren't always in line. And if you're thinking to yourself, like I was, well, why don't manufacturers just sell directly to customers if they don't like what the dealerships are doing? It's because in most cases, they can't. Around a century ago, car manufacturers wanted to offload the sales of their cars so that they could focus on production, and that worked well for a while. The dealerships could tailor advertising and sales tactics to regions so that they would be more effective, giving the car manufacturers potentially higher sales. The dealerships would then lobby and support only pro-dealer politicians, who in turn would pass franchise laws to protect the dealerships. The state, in turn, was highly motivated to protect dealerships because around 20% of state sales tax revenue comes from car dealerships. And here's where we get a good look at crony politics and capitalism in bed together. The dealerships, because they made so much money for the state via sales tax, were able to get laws created to protect themselves against competition. They got laws passed to make it illegal to open up dealerships within another dealer's territory, and also made it illegal to sell new cars unless you're a dealer. So you can only sell new cars if you're a dealer, and you can only open up a dealership if you aren't in another dealer dealership's territory, which in practice makes it so that new competition can't be created against already existing dealers, essentially carving out a monopoly for the car dealerships that are entirely enforced and protected by law. And this has been bad for consumers, but it's going to have to change soon. What I'm asking is that since EVs require so much less maintenance, which was half of the dealership's profits, then how are they going to be able to sustain operation? Let's look at it this way. We know a large part of EV adoption is education because people just don't know very much about EVs and they really don't know what they are and why they might be a better alternative for some people. In fact, many studies have shown that a large reason why people don't buy EVs is because they have an outdated view of them. And that right there is why you have Tesla popping up storefronts, which they have their primary stated goal as educating people. A Tesla product specialist when talking about their stores said, our goal is to inform people that these are the kind of cars that are out there and they are becoming cars that everyday drivers can afford. Now, let's compare that with the incentives for traditional dealerships to sell EVs. The dealerships know that they won't make nearly as much money on servicing and maintenance. So what motivation do they have to go out of their way and educate the customer on why it might be better for them to get an EV? In fact, their motivation is to push them away from buying EV because that isn't in the best interest of the dealership. And dealerships have a history of pushing people towards the cars that they want the customers to buy, not necessarily the cars that the customer wants to buy. This can happen whenever there's an asymmetry of information. Basically what that means is that usually the car salesman has more information about the cars than the customer does. And the salesman also knows that they have too much inventory of this car or they'll get more commission if they sell this car. But whatever the reason is, the dealership can have incentives to push customers towards the vehicle they want them to buy. And when you stack that issue on top of the lack of education for EVs in general, it's going to be a huge problem for traditional automotive manufacturers to tackle because they need to figure out a way to be able to sell EVs. 
Regardless, these automotive manufacturers have an uphill battle to fight because not only do they have to make a compelling EV, but then they have to somehow incentivize their dealerships to push these EVs to customers, something that hasn't been done successfully yet, and we know why. So when we look at the Cadillac dealerships that decided to throw in the towel instead of trying to sell EVs, well, maybe they were just seeing the writing on the wall. That's going to do it for this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and thanks for watching.